morning, church. Welcome. Let's all prepare our hearts as we worship the King of Kings. Fill my life. 
shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, Heavenly Father, Lord, we just thank you so much for this time that we get to worship you and just say thank you that you would do everything in your power to come after us, especially when we fall or we slip, Father. You are always there. You, your reckless love for us is just unbelievable. Again, Father, we thank you that uh, worship today and the message just touch our hearts and change it from glory to glory. We thank you, Father. We give you all the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Aloha, everyone. My name is Kimo Boy. I'm so happy to see your beautiful faces. I hope you are staying blessed and mahalo for tuning in. Welcome to New Hope Kauai. Please don't forget to stay connected by social media or join us in our website at nhkauai.com. There, you can find information about our church, get prayer, and give our tithes and offerings. You can give by using our PushPay app or... Mail in our love gift to P.O. Box 279, Kapa'a, Hawaii, 96746. At this time, let us pray for our tithes and offerings. Lord, bless our tithes and offering that it will be stewarded well to further your kingdom. Bless both gifts and givers 
we say in Jesus' name, and all God's people say, Amen. Hey, aloha everybody. We have something special coming up and we want you to be a part of it too. It's a daily dedication for the Mora family. And so we're going to be praying over Kenzo, baby Kenzo and, and little Bailey. And so when we're praying over them, can you be a part of it and stretch your hands out too? Because this baby dedication is such a special event unto the Lord. So take a look at this. Again, um, in the spiritual what you're about to, to do before the Lord is, is much more huge than what some people realize. Because, like I said, we cannot be with our children every single moment of their lives, right? So we're going to make it his kuleana, his responsibility to care for them, especially when we're not around. And we will be trusting that the Lord will be in charge. Because, quite frankly, they were his children before they ever came to us. He's allowing you guys to steward these children well. So we're going to need help and blessing not only on the children, but on the parents, right? And the extended family. And I, I like to share this, you know, Filipinos, they, yeah, I mean, they call them sponsors, right? Eh? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. They're not just there for pay for a wedding and the parties. Right? Yeah. They're responsible. Mm -hmm. That word sponsor comes for responsible. Mm -hmm. So the extended family is responsible too. Right? Just like the, the aunties, the uncles, right? Grandpa, grandpa, they're all responsible. My, my son, I, everybody permission for Rico. <laughs> <laughs> right? Right? That's all my Hawaiian style. So that's why the Philippine one wrong sponsor, the extended family is responsible also for caring for his precious children. And then I, I always say that um, you raise livestock and vegetables, but you bring the children up in the ways of the Lord. So it's not like raising you know, <laughs> chicken or food, right? And then one of the first accounts of baby dedication was when Hannah, in the Bible, she couldn't have babies. She prayed unto the Lord and then she got pregnant with Samuel. And she said, now this child will belong to you. So that was one of the first accounts. But Jesus was taken into the temple eight days after he was born with a Jewish uh, tradition for circumcision, but also was a dedication. Also was dedicating him unto the Lord. So... Part of that, that's the very beginnings of baby dedication. So that's what we will be doing today. Amen? Amen. So, okay. We want to pray, and then we will ask the Lord to do what he does best. Love his church. Right? So, let's pray. Father, in, well, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you for this precious family. And we ask in Jesus' name. That you will be in charge, Lord. This is your kuleana to take care of them. Keep them away from sickness, Lord. Keep them away from all danger and harm. No addiction will come upon their lives, Lord. That you will surround them with your love and mighty angels and they will be safe. Wherever they go, wherever they may be, your hand will be upon them. So, Lord, in the name of Jesus, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we dedicate Kenzo Bula unto you, Lord. May he use him for your kingdom, Lord. May he be a, may he be a mighty servant of the Lord. And precious baby, Lord Jesus, since you are a little girl, your princess, use her too, Lord, to lead all of her friends and family to you. May she be a shining light for her family. And we thank you, Lord. We bless mom and, and dad. Grandma extended family, Lord, because they're going to need wisdom too, Lord. And they're going to need help, good help, rest them in good help, finances, prosperity, to care for your children. These are your children, Lord, which you allowed this family to steward. So we dedicate them unto you. And we thank you, Lord, that miracles will abound to his precious children. We ask this in Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. 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 Hey, aloha and welcome everybody. Thank you once again for joining us and allowing us to come into your lives wherever you are on this online service. We really, really appreciate you. Hey, you know, I want to share something with, with all of you. Some, some of my friends know, my family does, my wife does, but I really love spy movies. Things that has counterintelligence, counterterrorism, espionage. Uh, it can be exciting it can sometimes it's drawn out and 
People say it's boring because you gotta pay attention, figure it out, but I just love those things of Tom Clancy and Jack Ryan. Everybody loves Jason Bourne, but I, I just love those things. Now, let me share a secret with you, a, a funny story. It, uh, to me, it's very funny. In, in fact, um, yeah, I get a good laugh when I think about it. When I was working for the airlines, I, I had one of the highest uh, custom security clearances. And, and there was a hologram on my ID, and I could board uh, almost any flight, including international flights, uh, without going too much security check. Now, now it's so much different. But anyway, I got this security clearance because I would go to all of these training classes um, for free. I mean, you wouldn't get paid, but uh, every once in a while, these memos would come out. Would you like to attend this custom security? Uh, we have uh, Department of uh, the DEA would come down sometimes, the drug enforcement agencies, and they'll be teaching all of these things about uh, terrorism and then uh, smuggling. And, and I would go to all these classes because I, I found it interesting. And, uh, and because I completed some of these classes, they gave me one of the highest uh, security clearances uh, in, in the airlines. But uh, the, the funny part is that um, I decided that uh, there was an opening and someone said there was an opening and the FBI in Hawaii was looking for <laughs> employees. And I said, okay, I'll go and try. I'll go and try to go, I'll go and apply. And um, in college, um, I took some criminal psychology classes and, and then learning from all of those um, other classes I went at the airport, I said, I can give them a chance. And, and so, you know, uh, in the interview, but uh, I know that was, it's required that you speak um, multi-languages. So I guess when they asked me if I speak multi-languages, I said, yeah, I bilingual. I speak English and I speak Pidgin. <laughs> and, then, and then, you know, you got to take all of these uh, psychoanalyzation tests and they make you look at all of these different pictures and oh, all of these different ink spots. Some of you might know what I'm talking about if he's in security. And depending how you answer, they'll analyze you. And, and then they give you all of these things to solve and questions and problems. And I'm like, oh my gosh. And anyway, I said, you know, on this particular one, I know I'm right. And they goes, are you sure? They go, well, you know, I know you, you're psychoanalyzing me and, and, and things like that. So, so they asked me, why do you think you're fit? I said, oh, well, nine out of the 10 voices in my head said I'm, I'm okay. So that's majority. <laughs> but just kidding. I'm pretty sure I did not get chosen because there was no way I was going to make one of the high standard uh, drug testing. <laughs> Even though I was clean and everything, there's one particular test that can go like seven years back. So I, I think that was the culprit. But anyway, it's a funny story when I think about it. But yes, I'm, I'm just somebody who's intrigued by, by spy mysteries and, and counterintelligence and counterterrorism. Because, you know, in all of these, there's, there's one common thing that it is there is a restricted concealed, undisclosed, classified amount of information that only a very small amount of people can get access to. In fact, only those with TS or they, they, some they call it TSSC can get it. That's called top secret security clearance. And that top secret security clearance must come from the top, the very top. Now today, we're going to get top secret classified information clearance from the top. And his name is Jesus Christ. You know, Jesus used to speak in parables, which we know, you know, and a, a parable is a, is a story used to illustrate a moral or a spiritual lesson. And Jesus also used allegories. Allegories is like a, a story with a hidden meaning that will reveal something that is mysterious to others. But if you figure it out, then you will see, wow, that is something so great to know. Now, the, the secret code that Jesus is going to give us unlocks the mysteries of many more. It's a cryptic code now, and it opens all of these hidden meanings. It's going to reveal knowledge not intended for everyone, okay? 
and it's in the Bible. So let's take a look at this scripture right here. Jesus is talking to his, his disciples. He has just spoken about a, on a parable he has just given to the people as he's given a message. And this particular parable now, his disciples come up to him. They go, you know, we don't, we don't understand that. We don't get them. And this is how Jesus replied in Mark 4, 13. He said this, and he said to them, the disciples, do you not understand this? He goes, do you not understand this parable? How then will you understand all the parables? So he's saying to them, if you don't get this one, you're not going to get the rest. Why don't you not understand this one? So let's go take a look at this parable that he's talking about. In Matthew 13, 3 to 9, you get plenty of scriptures there. So go men aside, kalamayel, to they get plenty, but, but bear with me, okay, and follow along. In Matthew 13, verses 3 through 9, it says this. Then he spoke many things to them, that's the people, saying, Behold, a sower went out to sow. And as he sowed, some seed fell on the wayside. Everybody say wayside. And the birds came and devoured them. Some fell on stony places where they did not have much earth, and they immediately sprang up because they had no debt. Everybody say stony places, okay? And then, but then when the sun was up, they were scorched, and because they had no root, they withered away. Okay, they withered away. Now get that. And some fell among Thorns, everybody say thorns or thorny ground. And the thorns sprang up and choked them, but others fell on good ground, say good ground, and yielded a crop, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Then he says this, he who has ears to hear, let him hear. Okay, now think about this now. He says, he, who, he always would say things like this, he who has eyes to see and ears to hear, let them see and let them hear. And everybody go, I hear eyes. You know, I get ears. You hear me say this all the time. He wasn't talking about the physical eyes and the physical ears. He's talking about the eyes and ears of our hearts and our spirit. Okay, now, after he said that, that's when the, the disciples come, come up to him. Okay, now, in, in verse 10, they say this. Matthew 13, verse 10. They said, and the disciples came and said to him, why do you speak to them in parables? They're not going to get them. They're not going to understand. In fact, we get in hard time understand. This is Jesus. He answered in verse 11. He answered and said to them, Because it has been given to you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. But to them, it has not been given. Top secret, classified, security clearance information is only given to a few select, is what Jesus is saying. And then in verse 12, he says, whoever has to him, more will be given and will have abundance. But whoever does not have, even what he has will be taken away from him. It goes on to say, therefore, I speak to them in parables, because seeing they do not see and hearing they do not hear, nor do they understand. Again, the word understand. And in them the prophecy of Isaiah is fulfilled, which he says, now he's going to speak on this prophecy given by Isaiah. And he says this, hearing you will hear and shall not understand, not understand. And seeing you will see and not perceive. And the hearts of these people have grown cold. Another interpretation, this one says dull. Another one says has grown cold, okay? Their ears are hard of hearing. He's talking about the ears of their hearts. Their eyes they have closed, lest they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears, lest they should understand with their hearts. Okay, understand with their hearts. And turn, so if they turn, if they hear and see with their hearts and turn their hearts to what God is saying and understanding these, these cryptic secret codes would be given to them. And then it says this, if they turn, that I should heal them. They would be healed of blindness, of deafness, and of not understanding the word of God. Now, Jesus goes on to say this. Here's the good news. He said, blessed are your eyes, he's telling his disciples, for they see, and your ears, for they hear. 
For surely I say to you that many prophets and righteous men desire to see what you see and did not see it. And to hear what you hear and did not hear it. Okay? And now they're, they're still standing there and the disciples going, we, you know, we, we never really get them, you know. And remember now Jesus said this, if you don't get this particular parable that I just shared about the sowing of the seeds, you're not going to get the rest. This is the cryptic code, the top secret classified information that you need to unlock and open the rest of the hidden things that you need to know. Okay, now Jesus says this in verse 18. In Matthew 13, 18 says, now he's going to explain, okay? Okay, now I'm going to draw a picture for you. I'm going to explain so you get them. He says this, therefore, hear the parable of the sword. This is when the disciple says, hey, why are you speaking parables? Why? And then he goes, you don't understand this, son. You're not going to understand the rest. Okay, let me explain them. Therefore, hear the parable of the sword. When anyone, in verse 19, hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, then the wicked one comes and snatches away what is sown in his heart. This is the one who receives seed by the wayside. Do you know that, you know, when we're meeting in person, in our bulletins every Sunday in the back, this is one of our signature scriptures right here, Matthew 13, 19. And he says that when anyone hears okay, the word of the kingdom, the word of God, and does not understand, then the wicked one, the devil one comes and snatches or steals what is sown in their hearts. And this is the one thrown on the wayside. That's why at New Hope Hawaii, we will do whatever we can so that people understand the word of God. You will see humor. You will see illustrations, skits, video. You will see dance. Guys will stand on their head to make sure that you understand the gospel of Jesus Christ. Or else, if we don't understand, the devil won't come and steal what is just sown in our hearts. I've been in services before. I've been in churches, sad to say. I grew up hearing sermons, messages, scriptures, and all. after they came out, like, huh? Um, you know, I, I just went through the motion. Um, it was a legalistic, religious ritual that I had to be there, but I didn't understand one thing that was being said. That's why the enemy came and stole if any seed was planted in my heart, and then my life never changed. I was still blind, and I couldn't hear what God was really speaking to me. Come on, somebody. And it goes on to say this in verse 20. But he who received the seed on stony places, okay, or rocky places, not, not places you get stoned, but rocky places, this is he who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy, okay? And yet he has no root in himself, but endures only for a while. For when tribulation and persecution arises because of the word, immediately he stumbles. Okay? Now, I'm going to say that all four of these situations with the seed, I have lived that way. I didn't understand, so now I realized the devil came and stole what was planted in my heart. Then there was a time I came to church, the message was so great, I received it with joy, everything was so great. But because my heart wasn't the correct kind of soil for the seed to grow, soon as problem arise, tribulation, soon as persecution, soon as I had a hard time, all of a sudden, it died. It died because I had no deep roots within myself. And immediately, the Bible says, now, now yet, in verse 21, watch this now. You see that with joy, yet he has no root in himself, but endures only for a while. For when tribulation and persecution arises because of the word, immediately he stumbles. I was coming to church. I was hearing the message, listening to sermons. Great message, filled with joy. But because I had no root, when a problem arise, immediately I went stumble. Now it goes on to say this now. In verse 22, now he who receives seed among the thorns or thorny grounds 
is he who hears the word and the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word and he becomes unfruitful. Okay, now we saw the seed that was thrown on the wayside. Okay, then the, then the thorny, the, I mean the stony places. Now this is seeds growing among the thorn and the thistles, the Bible says. Okay, this is, this is one who hears the word. I can understand and I can relate to this too. He hears the word and then all of a sudden, the cares of this world, my life, and then the riches of making money, trying to succeed on my own, deceives me. And then next thing you know, I'm unfruitful. Nothing grows from that seed. And then in verse 23, it says this now, the good one. But he who receives seed on the good ground is he who hears the word and understands it. Okay, understands it. And then he who indeed understands it, who indeed bears fruit and produces some a hundredfold, some 60, some 30. Okay, now let's go back and take a look at these four different scenarios. Okay, four places where the seed was sown okay well, what does that mean to begin with so here's this farmer he has his crop he has seeds for his crops probably was wheat or whatever it was and he would just have a bag of seed and he would just throw it and then try to plant it now some of the seeds went on what the bible says the wayside the wayside was a path so it was like hardened ground where people were walking on in between where he was planting all of his crops. Okay, so that's where it went on to, the wayside. So literally, it's, it's kind of packed and it's solid and it's caked, but then the seeds are exposed. Okay, and that's why the Bible says that the birds come, they see the seed, the thing that buried, and they eat the seed that's on the wayside. Then in the, the, the stony grounds, okay, the rocks, okay? So there were rocks there, maybe stones or pebbles, you know, some rocks. And, and what, what would happen when the seeds would fall next or even under, the moisture, okay, from the rocks, because it's warm, and then, and then when it will rain, it will stay there. And that condition was ideal for it to grow quickly. And that's why it says, oh, with joy, take the word in, and it grew quickly, but, when hard times come, bad weather comes, all of a sudden, they stumble. We stumble. And then the seeds grow on in the thorns, the cares of this world, making money, being successful, thinking about my, what I want to do, me, 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 my life, and trying to get ahead and trying to be all that. God says, the seed of the Lord was planted in our hearts. But then because we wanted money, success, fame, whatever it is, the thorns and the thistles choke what was growing. And now we are unfruitful. Okay? Now, the last one is the good ground. That's when you and I understand the word of God. Now, even here, there is a level of understanding and fruitfulness, 160 and 30 fold. When our hearts, the soil of our hearts are right, we can understand. And then now we will have fruits, the Bible says. How much? Some 100, some 60, some 30 fold. There's still fruit and production, but there, there's a level of it. And I can relate to that too, because when my heart is right, when I'm really receptive, and then I understand, I get much more fruitfulness in my life than other times when it's not. But get this, in verse 18 now, this is the only situation where the devil can steal. Okay? All the rest is on us. Only this one. When the seed is planted on the wayside, and the birds come and steal it, is when we get the word of God and do not understand, the devil comes and steals that because we did not understand. That's the only time the word is planted in our lives is when the devil can steal it. It's because we didn't 
understand. The rest is all on us. Okay? Now you got that, right? Now, how do we understand? You know, how do we, how do we get this cryptic code, this hidden message? How do we get the top secret security clearance for this classified information from the throne room of heaven? You know, it says this in Proverbs 4, 7. It says, wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. We all know how important wisdom in James 1, 5. says, he who lacketh wisdom, let him ask and should be given to him without reproach. Okay, so wisdom is so important. It says this, wisdom is the principal thing, okay? Therefore, get wisdom. And in all you're getting of the wisdom, how's this? It says this, get understanding. Because understanding the word of God is attaining the wisdom of the Lord. Now again, how do we get this understanding? How do we get this wisdom? Ah. When you watch spy movies or you read spy novels, sometimes they use somebody called an asset. Sometimes you have somebody who, uh, lack of a better term, a sponsor or someone who is guiding and training and leading someone that <laughs> in this espionage and counterintelligence. Okay, <laughs> some of you know what I'm talking about. But, but you're going to need somebody helping you along so you can get this classified information passed to you. Okay, you got that? Now, this is what the Bible says when we ask, how do we get that kind of understanding? And was, how do we get this top security clearance from Jesus? You know how we get it? We get it from the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will teach us, reveal to us, Unveil hidden messages, cryptic codes in the Bible so that you, can, I, you and I can see things with our hearts and our ears that was only meant for us. In fact, now think about this. The Holy Spirit is never addressed in the Bible as an it. He is a person. He, he, he's a person. That, 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 that's, you, you can only have a personal relationship with a person, okay? The Holy Spirit is not an it. In, in John 14, 26, it said this, but the helper, okay, the helper, it's called the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things, teach you all things, help us to understand. So the devil cannot steal those seeds. And then we get the wisdom. And then goes on to say, and bring to you your, bring to your remembrance all that I said to you. Sometimes we can forget. The promises of God, what Jesus said to us. And the Holy Spirit will make sure we can remember. And then the Holy Spirit will teach us so we understand. Okay? In John 16, 13, it says this. However, when he, he, you know, that's why it's always he, 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 he's a person. But when he, the spirit of truth has come, he will guide you into all truth. Guide you. Teach us to all truth. You know, he, uh, another word, the, the, the Greek word, uh, in, in English we say the uh, parakletos, okay? But uh, in the old ancient Greek, it was more para. You, pa, para means one who comes alongside. Parakletos is the one who comes alongside and then helps us. So he's helping us, he's teaching us, and then we can become an asset like secret agents for the kingdom of God. Come on, somebody. So when we look at what Jesus is saying today, if you don't get this one scripture, he's telling his disciples, you're not going to understand the rest. There's one parable right here. I'm giving, you, I'm giving you a cryptic code now. And if you understand this one, you're going to understand the rest. You need wisdom and understanding. Now how do we get that wisdom and understanding? We get it from the Holy Spirit. So if you're saved today, if you made Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior. Now, if you haven't, okay, here it is. Here. This is the beginning. Before unlock and get, you, you know, for, to get declassified. <laughs> and then now you're going to be top secret security clearance, okay? You got that? You have to make Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior. 
And all you need to do is not that difficult. Just say, Lord, I receive you now as my Lord and Savior. I am a sinner. Forgive me my sins. Thank you for dying on the cross and raising from the dead. And you give your life unto the Lord. And you say, yes, Lord. You are my Lord and Savior. I'm going to follow you from now on. You are my God. Then now you have been saved. Your name has been written in the, in the guest book in heaven. Okay? Now, if you've already been saved, or you've just been saved just now, go, please go to our, uh, you're going to see it online, and we're, we're going to have a place over there that you know, I got saved. Please let us know so all of heaven can rejoice. Now, for those of us who are already saved, it's so important that we get filled with the Holy Spirit so that He can teach us, so that He can, he can give us the understanding, so that he can, he can bring to remembrance the things that Jesus says in His Word, and He can guide us into the all truth the Bible says. And that's the Holy Spirit, having a personal relationship also with Him. He is a person. Be filled with the Holy Spirit so that we can get attain all of this wisdom or else if we don't understand the devil won't come and steal all these promises and great messages of healing and miracles that the lord is speaking unto us amen so just right now it doesn't have to be weird it's just an act of faith it's just opening yourself up to the spirit of the living god people all around the world open themselves up including myself at one time we open ourselves up to all kinds of spirits, right? Uh, have you seen somebody with an angry spirit? Have you seen somebody with a joyful spirit, a peaceful spirit, a kind spirit, an evil spirit, uh, a malicious, revengeful spirit? We can open ourselves up to all kinds of spiritual stuff. But here at this moment, if you want to open yourself up to the Holy Spirit, we got to make room and forsake all those other kinds of spirit and say, yes, Holy Spirit, fill me with your presence. Some of you right now, it doesn't have to be weird. Either you believe or you don't. Next thing you know, you're going to be speaking in a spiritual language. You're going to be reading the Bible and seeing things you never saw before. Things are going to jump out and grab you and shake you and go, wow, I read this scripture 20 times. I never saw it like that. And then you're going to have a transforming time in your life where you will never be the same because you're led by the Spirit of the Lord and He will empower you. Dunamis power in the upper room, it said. When they were in one accord, the Spirit of the Lord came upon them. They started speaking in the tongues and they had power and also understanding and wisdom. So just right now, in your own way, say, Holy Spirit, fill me afresh. I open myself to you. Fill me with your presence. Lead me into all truth and remembrance of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for revealing hidden classified information, not meant for everyone. But now I know it's meant for me. In Jesus' name, amen. So I hope you understood. I hope you got it. If you did, let us know online. You are filled with the Holy Spirit. You will be led by the Spirit of the Lord. You will understand God's word and his message. And the devil can no longer steal what has been planted in your heart. In Jesus' name, God bless you. We love you. Aloha. Wow, wasn't that a great message? What I took from that is I need to prepare my heart to accept Jesus' parables, his message, so that I can receive his blessings. If you said yes to accepting Jesus in your heart, this service, we would love to be a part of your journey. You can go to our website at nhkawaii.com and click on the I Said Yes to have for more information so we can help you along your journey. If you would like to stick around, we're going to be keeping our chat open and I'm going to be having some throwback videos for you to enjoy. God bless you. We love you. Aloha. I, I lift up my hands to you, Lord, and I praise your blessed name. I give praise to the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit.
grace has been enough And I'm believing the best is yet to come The cross before me, my hope on things above And in you, Jesus, the best is yet to come Your presence is an open door We want you, Lord, like never before Your presence is an open door Come now, Lord, like never And it won't stop now I know the breakthrough is coming by faith I see a miracle My God made me a promise And it won't stop now Your presence is an open door Want you, Lord, like never Your presence is an open door, so come now, Lord, like never before. So come now, Lord, like never before. So come now, Lord. 